Hello, and uh, my name's Simon, and I am going to show you how I pack off a film, which is the term used for taking it off a long play spool and putting it back into the um, onto the cores, uh, which are used for storage and transportation, as well as um, yeah, just making it easily for the film to be stored. And I'm not saying what I'm going to show you is the, the only way or the right or wrong way, um, but it's the way that I've done it over the years and hopefully, well, it's worked for me. So here we go. So here's the film and I've already started packing off uh, the first few reels. Um, the first thing you'll notice that makes that I do that makes it easier uh, to work with is if you look very closely you can usually see uh, where the real joins end but with a modern film it can be a little bit more difficult so what I do is take a chinograph pencil which is a little white pencil here it doesn't mark the film in any way but it just makes it easier to see where the potential film breaks are and you do that by just sort of looking at it closely. You can usually see the difference in the type of film. Um, you can probably see here and here, there's just a shading difference. So it's usually quite noticeable. So that's the first thing I do just to make it easy. And on the next thing I do is uh, make sure I'm dealing with the right reel. So we're gonna, we're gonna be packing off week four of my week with Marilyn and uh, what, I, what I, again I'd normally do is make sure that when you're making the print up you've got what we call the heads and tails all in the right cans so that when you come to break it down back onto the cores you've got everything in the right place. The, the problem with mixing it up is if you do end up by mistake putting the wrong leader onto the film that can cause few confusion later on and when we were showing films professionally it could mean that the next projectionist along who could be in a rush making the film up because it was late arriving or he was late arriving whatever um you could end up with some confusion there and i have had it where it's nearly caught me out so a little tip is to basically find the leader now modern prints are easy older prints not so easy um because they're not always identified but if you take the leader you'll see quite clearly that says real four and what we're going to try and do is have a look at the frame on here i just hold it up to the light that, as you can see, has been cut after um, the very first frame of film. That's always an important thing to do when you get a new print because if you cut it and just leave black leader, there's no way of recognising whether that frame of film is actually part of the feature or not. Um, so you don't know whether it is actually the, 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 the leader of the film that you're talking about. So the next thing to do, it's a bit difficult just holding the, the camera, but hopefully you'll get the idea. You can see when you hold the two pieces together, that they do indeed match up. So that tells me that this is the right tail leader for this particular part of the film. Okay, so what I've done next is just lined up into the film splicer uh, the tail of the film, which is uh, the end part of the, the end leader, and it's the tail of the, the actual film itself. So you've got it lined up on the, on the splicer. Um, for making up and breaking down prints, I just use ordinary sellotape. Um, again, professionally, when you're joining films, it's not advisable to use sellotape because over a period of time, 
um, the, the sticky glue does come, come become uh, a bit mushy. Um, so if you're joining a film, which is probably say somewhere in the middle of a reel um, with tape, uh, over the years it can it can sort of lose its ad adhesiveness and not only come apart when you're playing it, but actually create a little bit of gunge on the film, which isn't very good. Whereas splicing tape doesn't do that. However, because this is just at the tails and heads of the film, um, I've decided to just simply use sellotape because you're actually peeling it apart and putting it back together all the time. So it just saves on uh, more expensive uh, splicing tape, which is perhaps a little bit more difficult to find. So uh, simply pull the tape across like that. Bring the lever down, just a little push, and there we go. Uh, again, when I'm packing films off, um, I, I probably only do the one side, um, just because that, that would go through the projector if somebody didn't realise it wasn't, um, it was only spliced on one side. It does save a little bit of tape. And um, as I say, generally speaking, if you're making it up again to play on a long play system, it's easier to pull apart. So that's why I do that. Uh, just a little bit about cleanliness. Um, some of the, the real purists will be probably um, going red in the face now by the way I'm doing this. But um, generally I find if you keep a very clean workspace, um, film is, is, is relatively resilient. And uh, although dust is a a bit of a killer it doesn't scratch the film uh, too much um, if you really wanted to you could lay some newspaper down on the floor which is another good way of just keeping away any dust so that's just a little tip okay let's uh, let's just crack on and get this ready to rewind onto the spool okay for the, so for the next part of the process um, core goes onto the split spool it's called a split spool for obvious reasons you'll see in a minute um, that is, uh, it just screws on and then what I generally do is just make sure it's over these rollers properly and one of my pet hates I'll talk about it is tape tape here this stuff sometimes people use it because it's easier to help it get onto the core but it the, the problem with it is when <coughs> when you get to the end of the film and you don't realize it's on there it does snap and pull the film so i don't like doing that um just make sure all the tapes off the end you'll soon get into the swing of being able to wind it on a um, bit difficult for me hang on one second while i turn a little bit of power on if i can so if you gently turn the power on uh, just a few turns is all it takes to get it seated on the, on the core properly. And then just obviously screw up, screw on the, uh, the rest of the core. Now, what I've experienced over the years is if you, the, t the tendency is to um, screw it up quite nice and tight. If you do that, sometimes it's almost impossible to, to unscrew it so uh, what i find it works really well is when you get it to the point where it's just if you like finger tight pull it back off again so it's almost free and uh, that way when you're rewinding it won't come off because the centrifugal force will keep it in place but um it, it'll be easier to get off at the other end now with rewinding what you're trying to achieve is a very smooth reel uh, that is what the end result of what we want to achieve if you look at one i did earlier I'll look i won't say it's perfect but it's pretty good and the reason you want that is because if you get any slight raising of film when you stack them together over the period of time that's going to damage the sprockets um, and it's a very difficult thing to put right um, 
repairing sprockets is a long and tedious job so you just want to make sure that you're careful in keeping it smooth and the way to achieve that is smoothness in the way that you actually now approach this so first things first let's start the power on and bring it up to speed fairly quickly obviously you need to check you've got it over the rollers correctly you can see they're spinning nicely both ends and rule of thumb now is unless you're checking the film don't interfere with it once it's going um, if you interfere with it in any way you will start to see it wobble on the spool and you'll get it so that it's not um, flush when it's rewinding. Now, what I generally do, especially with an older film, or can do, just to make sure it's okay, is just, just begin to just ever so carefully bring your fingers onto the film. Now that way you can feel any irregularities going through. With older films in particular, you may feel that there's um, uh, 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 you can feel the sprocket damage, which is the thing that um, will cause your show to falter because a, uh, a, a, a potentially broken sprocket can tear when you're projecting it and unfortunately can lead to issues like this, which again is very hard to uh, put right. So just a little bit of care and attention when you're making up an old film um, is now as we get to the uh, towards the end of the film just pay a bit of attention you can generally uh, see the the white chinograph mark now getting closer and closer what I generally then do is get ready to adjust the speed now you can see that I've got my finger on the top of the metal face here uh, that's to stop me getting any form of static shock um, because when you're dealing with this type of film uh, it's easy for it to bring up a bit of static so I just do that now you can see I'm really 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 gently just inching it back ever so slowly only because if you jar it you will cause the film to ruck up and you'll get a very annoying raised uh, piece of film on the spool so we're just going to inch it very very slowly and here we go closer and closer generally um, you can hear it hear the join coming before you see it uh, you get used to that but take your time towards the end. This is the most important bit. Um, if you don't get, if you suddenly overcook it uh, and find you can't turn it down quick enough, can you hear that? There it goes. It's better to overrun. It's better to overrun uh, and then wind back than actually stop it and then find you missed the join. So. <clears throat> So there's very clearly the join. Um, when, I when I make the film up, I always just scribble on top of the splice because it makes it easier to, to see it. With a modern film, uh, especially polyester film, you'll find that um, there's not many splices because it's very hard to break. But with older films, you might find, particularly with a, a well-worn film, towards the end of the reel, there might be half a dozen or more different splices um, very difficult then to work out which one is the the one that is for the end of the reel. So that's um, that's, for, that's just a good little tip. So there, there's the uh, the film. No magic about this at all, uh, and I'm sure you'll be able to do it. But just pick your fingernails under the under the splice very gently, and then peel it away um, and, until the the sellotape comes off the off the end. There you are. It doesn't take much, and then you can just strip that, strip that away, and clear off all the rest of the tape. Um, I always suggest 
leaving it so it's actually clear of tape because if you don't over a period of time when you're re-splicing uh, the film together it does build up um, quite a substantial layer of uh, splicing tape which um, when it goes through the projector could could jam in the gate so just always get the, all the, uh, uh, the X tape splicing tape off it's quite a nice feeling when you uh, when you've got it so you can just peel it peel it away um, sort of therapeutic really but there we go it's come away nicely um, what we used to do in the olden days or the, pro the professional days we might not even bother to splice it we just use that residual bit of ticky tape to go against the leaders um, saved you using up any of your own splicing tape but what I found now, you know, when you're using archive prints, you don't know necessarily um, how the print's going to be run next time. Um, and if it's not attached properly, somebody could just assume the leader's on there and uh, run it through and then find they've got a problem at the end. So same as the, the tail, just to make sure you're looking at the... Uh, the right identifying frame, if there is one, might not be one, but if there is, always helpful. And that this is indeed, again, if you've got an identifying leader, um, real four, can you just see that? And we're very lucky with this one. This is why I chose it to show you the theory. Because somewhere it should say uh, real four. Oh, wow. Somebody's handwritten it. It's always nice to to see original stuff on there. Uh, so we can just go ahead and quickly splice that back on to the front of the film. There we go. Just to, just to prove we've managed to find the right uh, the right join. Hard to see with the camera, but hopefully you get the gist of it. So uh, I'll go ahead and splice that back on. Try and be as careful as you can about um, making sure that the leader that's indicating it is the uh, end of the film or, or the head of the film, if you're doing it the other way around, is actually just that. Um, because when you come to show the film again, or somebody else comes to show a film where you receive a print, um, if the leaders have been spliced on by accident the wrong way around, that will cause loads of confusion when you're making it up. So to know for sure that leader which says the end of reel 5 is actually joined on to what is the end of reel 5 is um, very important. So I just thought I'd mention that. So once you've got the leader back on, um, what I tend to do, and this is uh, just the way I do it, is I use the, um, the powered the powered rewind because once you've got the leader, um, it's not so important about keeping it flush because you can generally uh, do that by hand if need be. So just gently a little bit of power on the control, um, let it run through your fingers ever so gently. Uh, you'll find this. I mean, this leader is brilliant. There's no joins or splices, it's almost like new. Um, but with older leaders, you'll find oh, there's all sorts of bits and pieces and splices on it. But I, I like to think that presentation is quite important when you're packing off, as you never know quite where it's going to end up. But uh, there we go. So that's that. Um, that's quite interesting because um, <clears throat> it says part two on the handwritten leader. Um, which possibly could be a little bit confusing, but you can see it's definitely real four. Uh, and that would be because it's been made up onto, rather than onto the big long play spools, onto two 6,000 foot spools. I've got one there, look. Um, they hold uh, three reels of film, usually. 6,000 foot, maximum 2,000 foot a reel, that's 6,000 foot. And then they play off the top spool onto twin projectors. Um, so the projectionist would actually have to 
do a changeover from one projector to the other. Um, in the olden days, you'd have a project, you'd have a changeover in between each 2,000 foot reel. So literally every 15 to 20 minutes, the projectionist would be swapping the um, the projectors over in sync, hopefully in a way that you wouldn't notice on the screen. But uh, as we came to the realms of uh, Xenon lamps, um, which last for the whole run of a feature up to about 3,000 hours usually, um, it meant that projectionists could join film together and uh, have a little break in the middle. As I say, I think occasionally sometimes cinemas might actually put an, in, in, an interval in as well, just to um, get a little bit of uh, concession money from selling ice creams and chocolate. Um, but uh, that wasn't condoned by the distributors um, and directors certainly wouldn't have liked to have seen their film shown in that way. Um, but anyway, so here we go, back to where we started. Um, as you can see, it all looks pretty neat on the spool. Proof of the pudding's in the un unscrewing. So let's, as you can see, that's lovely and loose on there. Um, one thing actually I might do before I just take it off is um, stick the ends down. So let me just get some tape. I'll show you how I'll do that. So this is my own personal system for doing things. So I've got red for uh, the to indicate the end of a reel. As we're um, indicating the start of a reel, I'm just going to pull some green off. And uh, again, it's slightly difficult to do here, but what I generally try and do is just overlap that a bit, uh, so that when it um, when you try and peel it off again, it's easier to find the end. So I'll do that. I'm going to put the camera down. Okay, so there you are. I've stuck it onto the uh, the start of the film. I've overlapped it a bit there, so it um, it's easier to get off. I'm just going to uh, stick this onto the reel. Put it. Very therapeutic this I find when it goes well when it doesn't go well it's a pain in the bum um, but uh, for those of you who know me proper preparation and all that the five P's is generally a good guide so that or more haste less speed so um, the, the, the slower you take things sometimes the easier and the quicker it will it'll be um, so there we are, you can see quite a smooth pack off there, um, that's what we're trying to achieve. That can come off there now, sometimes a bit stiff, so just be careful, always keep the, the film up horizontally. You will see or feel if it's a bit loose, because the, the nightmare scenario is the core popping out, you'll never get that back in easily. So there she goes, that's uh, my week with Marilyn. Reel four of six, and back in the can, and ready for a safe storage. So we'll just crack on now and do the other three reels that are left. Hopefully you uh, found the video interesting and useful. Um, just to sum up, I just wanted to say, um, just remember every particular print that you deal with will be different. They all have their own little idiosyncrasies, um, depending on how old they are. Some of them are quite brittle. Some, some days, for some reason, things don't seem to go the way that you expect them to go. But just persevere. Practice makes perfect. Take everything slowly. Um, don't practice on your favourite film, obviously. Put on a reel of trailers, maybe till you get a little bit more proficient with it and uh, just enjoy it. So, um, as I say, hopefully you found it interesting and uh, I'm going to plan on doing a few more different videos for, in the future. Um, maybe the next one I'll do is on making a print up. That seems to be the logical thing. So anyway, thank you very much. And goodbye for now.